Welcome biologists. Today we are looking at specification point B, taken from the OCR specification for biological membranes. And this involves the fluid mosaic model and its components, as you can see listed there. Now we should real hopefully remember a phospholipid is similar to a triglyceride. Uh, you covered this in biological molecules if you need to go back and have a quick look. But the structure of my phospholipid aids in its role. So my two fatty acids chains here give a hydrophobic property to their tails and the, the glycerol and the phosphate here give the hydrophilic properties to my head of my phospholipid. And this is important in creating a bilayer. So a very popular question is why do phospholipids arrange themselves in a bilayer at the cell surface? And this is because my hydrophilic heads orientate themselves towards the water and the hydrophobic tails orientate themselves away. It's really good to use those terms orientate away and towards. The exam doesn't really like the term water loving and water hating that you might see in textbooks and other explanations. Also, students quite regularly miss off this last little bit here. You need to make sure that you mention in here that water is also outside of the membrane and it's also on the inside of the cell there. So it's outside the cell and it's inside the cell. It's really important you don't miss off that last little point to pick up all the marks. So as we can see here, this is them, our phospholipid bilayer. We're going to go through the different components of the bilayer. But before we do, we need to understand why is it called the fluid mosaic model? So the reason why it's called a fluid is because the components in the membrane move around uh, and it is very flexible. Um, it's also called mosaic because these proteins that are embedded in the membrane give it a mosaic look and a mosaic feature. So the first component we're going to look at here is the glycoproteins and the glycolipids. So um, as you can see here, they both contain carbohydrates, carbohydrate chains, which are the purple stick looking things here. However, a glycoprotein is a carbohydrate attached to a protein and a glycolipid is a carbohydrate attached to a phospholipid. Now they both have a very, very, very similar roles. They're both involved with cell recognition and identification. They're both involved with cell signaling, as we looked at in the previous video. We've also got here that they act as antigens, they both act as receptors, and they're both involved with cell adhesion, where cells may need to bind to each other to create a structure. Now, in an exam, don't forget, you might be asked uh, about a hormone or a drug that you've never heard of before, and you're asked to identify and explain the role of a glycoprotein and glycolipid in identifying this hormone or drug or its role with that. And the, the key thing here is remembering that my glycoproteins and my glycolipids, because they act as receptors, these receptors are complementary and specific to whatever it is it's asking you in the question, what, whatever hormone or drug it's asking you about. So it's worth remembering that. And that links into the cell signaling that we also covered in the previous um, video. Next thing that we need to look at here are the proteins involved. So we have some extrinsic proteins in the membrane. These are only on the outside of the membrane here. <clears throat> we also have intrinsic proteins which span the width of the membrane. And these are usually transport proteins. There are two types of transport proteins you need to be aware of. We've got a carrier protein and we've also got a channel protein. Now these are involved with transporting different substances across the membrane and you're going to learn about the transport of substances across the membrane when you do facilitated diffusion and diffusion in a lot more detail later on within the membranes topic. We've also got cholesterol here and cholesterol sits between the tails of the phospholipids, between these fatty acid tails and it regulates the fluidity of the membrane. The more cholesterol you have, the less fluid the membrane is going to be. And it's really important here you do not mention rigidity. If you mention it being rigid or anything to rigidity, you do not get the marks. It's also with fluidity. The next thing to mention here is this phospholipid bilayer. So quite often in an exam, it will ask you to label the entire phospholipid bilayer. It's not very clear on this diagram, but you can see here this black line that spans the whole width of the membrane. This one here is asking you to identify it as a phospholipid bilayer. So well worth mentioning that and being aware of that. So as you can see, we've covered through the main components of the phospholipid bilayer. Just be aware, as, as I mentioned there, they may ask you about hormones and drugs and how these receptors can influence and be used in this way. Good luck with your exams, guys. All the best.